the paddy bird, a crab hunting egret common to India, uses an innovative method. It makes short flights very close to the water until it sees the fish moving. It then lands on the water, turning about in the air and launching its well aimed harpoon in the direction in which its prey is swimming. In the Jils, or flooded lakes, there are other fishing birds that use their bills as harpoons. But unlike the heron, they prefer underwater fishing. Like their relative, the cormorant, the darter do not have waterproof plumage, and they must dry themselves in the sun after one or two immersions in search of fish. They swim under the water with only their long-shaped necks above the surface, which is why they are commonly known as snake birds. Here is yet another harpooner and another harpooning style. The spotted kingfisher prefers to hover above the water and fall like a dart onto its prey once located. Each species eats different types of fish depending on their size and position in the water. The kingfishers catch their fish near the surface, while the darters, for example, capture larger fish closer to the bottom. Spoonbills are residents of the park, that is, they live in the Keolodeo all year round. Cormorants, darters, jacanas, heron and egrets, and the coots and aquatic rails also remain in the park so that the hunting fowl and scavengers have food to live on 12 months out of the year. The cleaning of cadavers is extremely important. The water at Keoladeo is pooled and decomposing bodies can alter the quality of the water, particularly in the summer months. Keoladeo is the name of an old Hindu temple dedicated to the god Shiva, which can still be visited inside the park. A thick forest formerly covered the vicinity of this small temple and in local language, jungle is called Ngana. When the park was created, the area was known as Ambaraptpur, but in honor of the temple and the surrounding forest, it was renamed Kiladeo Ngana. What is now a national park owes its existence to the Maharaja Kishan Singh and his love of hunting. At the beginning, this area was no different from the surrounding forests of undergrowth, but there was a slight inclination where the water collected during the rainy season. The water attracted the birds until it dried up, and the Maharaja, who loved to hunt them, decided to add water from a nearby irrigation channel to the depression and build a system of canals and floodgates to control the flow and continuance of the water. The use of floodgates managed to keep the depression flooded year-round. The aquatic fauna and vegetation prospered and the fowl came by the thousands and stayed all year long. To celebrate the success of his initiative, the Maharaja organized extravagant hunting parties attended by British dignitaries and Indian princes. The Bharatpur hunting excursions became famous among the Indian aristocracy of the beginning of the century. As some inscriptions carved in stone inside the park remind us, the killings were atrocious. The sorrowful record was won by Lord Linlithgow on the 12th of November 1938, when, heading a group of 39 hunters, they killed 4,273 birds in just one day.
Today, the largest hunting ground of waterfowl in India has been converted into a sanctuary for their protection. The hunting parties for the privileged continued until 1964, and the Maharaja retained his personal hunting rights until 1972. Since then, no hunter has shot any bird in Keoladeo, Ghana. <laughs>